guys, this is Addison Kelly, and today I'm going to be doing the Boston Freedom Trail, so let's go. The Bunker Hill Monument is known for being one of the first major battles in the Revolutionary War. Even though in the war the British won, it showed the colonists that they could fight the British, and it would help them set up for the rest of the war. On the 50th anniversary of the battle, they started on the monument structure, which was started in 1825 and completed in 1842. that the USS Constitution is still in use today. It was a warship that was used in the war in 1812. It carried officers, sailors, and marines. It also had a nickname called Old Islanders. Because the cannons didn't hurt the ship, you can still see it today floating in the Boston Harbor. The USS Constitution was buried here at Coops Hill Burying Ground. Did you know that it is extremely important to preserve burial grounds so as time goes we can still see history there to this day? If it was ever destroyed, we would not be able to see these sites ever again. This is the Old North Church. This church is known for their iconic box pews. If you're wondering what a box pew is, it is like a room without a ceiling that you and your family sit in for church. The church is famous because Paul Revere and William Dawson received lantern signals when the British troops were coming. This is where the famous saying came from, one if by land and two if by sea. The Old North Church also has a burial site under the church that contains 1,100 people. This Dr. Spikish Gray House is Paul Revere's house. Paul Revere is known for his midnight ride. You might be asking yourself what the midnight ride is. It was when Paul Revere went out in the night to warn Samuel Adams and John Hancock that the British might come and arrest them. After he told them, he got on his horse and went to finish his midnight ride to tell people the British was coming. We are inside of Faneuil Hall. Have you ever been to a town hall meeting? Faneuil Hall is a site of the first town hall meeting ever. More important events have happened at this place, like the Sons of Liberty proclaiming against the royal oppression. For over 275 years, it remains the site for meetings, protests, and debates. One of the iconic pictures in this building is the gold grasshopper with the bean on the top. It was used during the 1812 in the war to spot spies, according to the legend. Big skyscraper buildings is the old state house. Years ago, this building set as a witness of the Boston Massacre. The Boston Massacre was on King Street, March 5th, 1770. This was when some British soldiers shot into the crowd and killed some colonists. This helped to fool the hatred between the British and the colonists. This state house is designated as a National Historic Landmark and is one of the oldest surviving public meeting houses in Boston.
This is the site of the Boston Massacre, which was outside of the old state house. After the gunshots were fired, five people ended up killed in the streets of Boston. One of the men that had died that day was Chris Tux. Chris Tux was one of the most important men in the revolution. Soon after, the Sons of Liberty held a funeral for the tragic event that was named the Bloody Massacre. As you approach the school, you will come across Benjamin Franklin's statue, which is right over here. Benjamin Franklin had many contributions to science like electricity and lightning rod. This school has, was founded on April 23, 1635, and is known as one of the oldest public schools in America. One cool fact about Benjamin Franklin is that he was important to science, but also to the contribution to America. This place right here is a big part in history. It is known for Puritan sermons, public meetings, and the tea tax debates. You might be wondering what Meeting House this is. Well, I'm here to tell you it is the Old South Meeting House. This house was built for a Puritan Meeting House in 1729. It still stands today as one of the most important colonial sites. This Old South Meeting House is also one of the very first earliest American museums of American history. I wonder how scary but exciting it would have been if we could have been there when this signal was given to start the Boston Tea Party. I know that America's most noble citizens rest here at Grand Air Burying Grounds such as Samuel Adams, John Hancock, and even Paul Revere. Grand Air Burying Ground was established back in 1660. This burying ground is known for their soul epi. The soul epi is a school or death head with the wings on the side to represent you going to heaven. You can't miss the Park Street Church as you enter into Boston, because this church was one of the very first landmarks you will see. This church was founded in 1809, and it was built by Peter Banner. Park Street Church attendance has grown over the years to 1,500 members every Sunday morning, as well as 30 other ministries. Massachusetts State House with that big old dome on top. This iconic building has been in use in the government since it was built. It now serves as the state capital building and seat of government for the community of Massachusetts. It is near the Charles River and is on the Big Pond Street. Everyone loves a good town hall meeting. Why don't you join me here where town hall meetings all begin? This common or Boston common sits on land that Puritans purchased for people to use for meetings and to carry out punishments. This is a wonderful place full of history and moments that have helped mold and transform this wonderful nation to what it is today.